Okay, I think we're recording. Uh, hello, folks. My name is Oshin, um, and I'm the creator of a podcast known as The Troubles Podcast. Um, this is a video I'm making for Patreons, but I'm also going to publish it out um, to everybody. So I'm not too sure if many people will see it or not, but I think it'd be nice to put a bit of a face to a podcast. If you've been listening to my podcast and you've never seen my face, here it is. On day two of being kind of hungover a little bit uh, after... Um, well, the, the main theme of this video, I guess, is um, the Irish Podcast Awards. So, um, yeah, I guess this was uh, amazing. It was, it was really amazing, <coughs> which is really funny because if I didn't win, I'd be like, oh, the awards aren't important. But the, the brain always makes, makes up excuses. But I, ha I had, you know, I've been doing this podcast now for maybe three years, three or four years. Uh, I, I launched March, the lockdown happened, so 2021, I think. Um, and I've always had like a really lovely network or community of listeners, always very receptive, always listening and, you know, into engaging with me and talking back. But apart from that, you know, anything beyond that, just not looked at. Um, any ma media or any of that sort of stuff, not in the newspaper, not in articles or anything. The odd journalist would reach out to me. Um, but it just kind of, the podcast kind of uh, kept ticking away very slowly, kind of, um, you know, um, I just never seemed to get into the media, which I guess I was okay with, to be honest. I used to work in the media and we're in a different phase of life right now where anyone can create whatever they want to do. So anyway, the there was the English Podcast Awards, which I think I entered a couple of years ago. Um, and I entered in the Troubles as True Crime, which it is not. But I did launch this podcast as a true crime podcast. Um, I felt it could be an interesting way to set the tone of it. And I, at the time, true crime was also a very um, popular genre as opposed to history. History about three years ago was less, um, I don't know what the word is, but there was less listeners, I think, at the time, which has changed now. The demographic has really changed. History podcasts are up there with true crime as one of the most popular genres. Um, so yeah, when the Irish Podcast Awards came around, I, I entered this, this time around, and I was like, the entering criteria is you basically submit, I think it's five three-minute clips from across your episodes that you released uh, this year or in the past year. Uh, little vignettes or snippets, kind of. Um, so I was like, okay, how do I convey what this podcast is in five three-minute clips? And I was like, and how do I also try and maybe impress the judges or something or trying? So I was like, okay, well, Bertie Ahern was a pretty big fish um, that I had on the podcast. So I used a lot, like, I think two of the clips, two of the five clips were quotes from Bertie. <clears throat> and then maybe I think I used Jim Owled with the Hooded Men. And um, then maybe one of the narrative ones, maybe the the Hyde Park bombing, I think. Um, I'll have it somewhere. I can put it up if you want to hear it. But if you've listened to my podcast, you, you already know what, what my episodes. So then when, you know, I was lucky enough to be shortlisted, which has never happened before. Um, I was shortlisted alongside Bertie Ahern's podcast, As I Remember It. And I was like, oh, feck. You know, I was, I'm going up against him now. And I was trying to use him to try and give me an, an extra edge. Um, so to be honest, I just wasn't very, uh, I wasn't very optimistic. Um it was Bertie Ahern, which was made by News Talk. It was um, the Belfast Telegraph. And then it was two other podcasts. I think one was uh, with the BBC and one, I think, was with RTE. Um, so I was kind of going up against more established media companies. You know, it was, again, I don't have a PR company. I don't have anything. I don't. It's just me in my bedroom with a duvet over my head recording half the time. Even this setup, <laughs> this is still pretty, you know, pretty new, basically. So we said, feck it, I'll go to the awards. And I was like, but I'd love to go with, I'd love to bring a friend along. Um, and since I've had John from the Troubles Archive, he's written six episodes now, we've realised. I said, feck it, John, come on over and we'll go to the awards together and we'll have a bit of fun. Um, so John came over two, three nights ago, uh, over to my house. We had a rake of beers and a chat. And uh, he's, his level of knowledge around geopolitical conflict all around the world uh, is insane. After about two hours, he was like, oh, I can't remember that Remember that guy's name now, guys, I'm drunk. And like, he had just, you know, listed off 500 different names, places, people, like, conflicts, like fascinating, fascinating guys to talk to. Um, but I want to, I also wanted to fuck with him a bit. So my dad, like, I'm, I'm a chauffeur. I, the, the trouble is not my full-time job at all. Um, and my dad drives a very nice, like, Mercedes. So I was like, dad, can you pick us up? You know, bring us into the awards. We'll look, you know, we'll look the bee's knees. But I didn't tell John that it was my dad picking us up. So my dad rocks up and he's, he, he makes such an effort. Like he was in a full suit and the car was looking amazing, uh, which he didn't need to do. Like it was just asking for a lift in. But, um, <clears throat> but I, I decided, I was like, hello, driver. 
Um, and then I started giving out about the car. I was like, this car is old and it's dirty, which it wasn't. It's a beautiful car. And John was just trying to ignore me and keep talking to my dad going, oh yeah, no, we're heading into town. Like he was doing the polite thing of going, what, is Oshin just a complete dickhead or what? And I started getting angrier and then I started calling the company saying, you've sent out an old, disgusting, dirty car. Uh, so after like, we could, I could only last about less than five minutes because I was laughing so much. I had to just go, John, it's my dad. I'm just messing. So we got, we got the day off started pretty well. And then I brought John to a few of my favorite pubs in Dublin. But I was very conscientious of the award ceremony because <clears throat> I just didn't want to be really drunk. I wanted to maybe meet people and network. Um, and I made a bit of a balls with the ceremony, which I'll explain now soon. But basically, um, so I brought John to, oh yeah, Palace, my, my favourite pub in Dublin, Palace Bar. Um, then we went to the Dawson Lounge and we had a great chat with a guy who works in opera there with his daughter. Um, really interesting fella. And then we got one more pint in uh, Kyo's, which I love. Um, yeah, and then we kind of, you know, I was getting pretty nervous, to be honest. I didn't know what to expect. I've never really gone to these events before. Um, so let's see, let me think about it. So then we, the doors were at half six, so we got in just before seven. Red carpet, pictures were taken of me, me and John looking like eejits. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if you've ever done these sort of things where you stand in front of a camera, but I hate it. I like taking pictures, I don't like being on the other side. Um, so yeah, I met, I met this guy Tom, um, basically one of my old school friends that I haven't met since the student council days back when I was 13. So it's great to see him nominated too. He has a, uh, comedy podcast I think so anyway um yeah like my dad even said it you know all my friends were kind of saying it look it's great to be nominated but you're just up against too many big fish there's no chance that they'll, they'll go for you you know the company whoever picks the winner it would make sense to pick a winner that'd be beneficial for the company like if Bertie Hearn was there the PR would be brilliant or whatever um so I really was absolutely not expecting it um so then like you know the award ceremony starts very quickly and the history category was the third category and they announce uh, Highly Commended and then the award. So I said to John, I whispered over to him, I was like, John, look, I bet you I'll get Highly Commended and then Bertie Hearn or the Belfast Telegraph will get the big award. So then they, they read it out and they're like, okay, we went to Highly Commended, Bertie Hearn. And I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, and then they were like, I'm the winner for a history podcast um, of the years, the Troubles podcast. So that's, that's this one here. So... Um, yeah, I walked up, I was shaking, I was absolutely shell-shocked. My Cloda, my friend Cloda from uh, Nicola Talent's Crime World was just screaming. John was screaming. Uh, and we were just like, I was like, I was shaking, you know, and I was, I was shell-shocked. I was like, there's Zara, your own Zara King is lovely and Richard Chambers, very nice people. So anyway, like, I, like, it was just, we were on cloud nine. I went down with John and we were just like, what? Like, we absolutely in shock and disbelief, basically. Um, and obviously we wanted to go celebrate, but the award ceremony was going, going on for another hour and a half. So eventually we stayed for two more or three more awards. And then John was like, here, come on, man. We'll go outside and have a cigarette and just kind of like take this in. And I was like, yeah, go on, feck it. And we go outside and then we meet this girl, Michelle, who um, she has, uh, she just won an award. Her podcast is called Let's Talk About Ganeus, which is the Irish word for sex. So, you know, she was on cloud nine because she just won this award. Her, her, she won her category. And then we just ended up, this is, I'm awful at this, but we ended up having a load of crack and chatting to everyone out there. And we stayed out there for ages, for ages, for the whole thing. Because we were just on cloud nine. We didn't expect to get this win or whatever. So uh, this is the part where I, I um, yeah, I'm going to be a bit regretful, I think, for a while. Basically, I'm sitting out there, cigarette in my hand, delighted. I don't even smoke that off very rarely, but it was a celebrating thing. And a, a woman comes out and she was like, excuse me, are you Oshin, are you Oshin Feeney? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, you've just won another award. And I was like another award I was like there's only one award I was in I didn't realize that the judges of the pool of all the podcasts all of the entries all of the winners the judges would pick an overall winning podcast so podcast of the year 2023 and I'd won the feckin' thing so I was like oh my god what the, what's going on so I ran in and like uh, Oh, this is so, I'm, I'm so embarrassed about this. Basically, none of the winners are allowed a speech except for podcast of the year. I wasn't there. So the poor judges or the poor announcers twiddle their thumbs going, where is he? Where is he? Where, where is he? Well, okay, sorry. And they ended the night. So as I walk in with my, like, like a little feckin' mouse, like, going, oh my God, like I just wanted to crawl up into a hole and die because people were just getting up and going. And then the presenter saw me and then the photographer was like, look, we got to get a picture to get you in the paper. So I took a picture with, I think... I don't know. This was a blur. I, if I was shaking for the history one, I was just, I, I couldn't even hold the award without shaking so much. 
So I'm a little, I'm a little sad that I missed the speech, um, and that was just silly and it was giddiness. And I, just, I didn't even know there was a second award. I didn't even know there was a, and it was a bit disrespectful. I should have stayed to be with the other podcasters as well. Uh, but me and John were just so amped. We had to go out and talk about it. Like we were, we just didn't see it coming, you know. So then the second one comes, and we were just absolutely blown away. Um, but again, I think I really would have liked to do a speech. I probably would have made a complete balls of it. Um, but if I had a chance to do a speech and speak to all of these very respected organizations and very respected, just lovely individuals who start this in their bedroom like me, and there's a lovely mix of that. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I think I'd like to, you know, thank the people who opened up and were super vulnerable with me to tell me the worst experience of their life that I'm going to use and promote my podcast with. That's something I always wrestle with. Um, but it's when I get messages from people saying how important this stuff is and how important it is to have this this body of knowledge of it um it makes it worthwhile it makes it so it's, it makes it so much worthwhile this is my passion this is what i love doing um and whether i'm recording in this like jerry rig studio or in my bedroom under the duvets um i it, it's it's all just been so worth it you know with or without awards with or without anything um so yeah, that's that's kind of it. <clears throat> I I'm still a little bit shell shocked. Um, I don't really know what to do now. I don't know. Will, I don't know whether this change anything. It probably won't change anything. It certainly won't change how I make what I make. Um, it'd be really cool to go full time, but I still don't think that's probably a possibility. Um, but I just it would, that would give me a lot of time. If I was full time, I could just write and write and write. Um, well, and procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate is what I've learned. So then, yeah, then me and John, we went out with Michelle and what was her friend's name? Jolene. Then we met this comedian guy who was lovely. We went to La Hacienda uh, and he wasn't letting people in and we were showing the awards because we were drunk. Oh, we won an award. Let us in. Oh, let us in. And then like, uh, we, we were just, I, I, there's only, I think as an Irish person, it feels really weird to gloat or, you know, or just celebrate a win because it's just not in our psyche to do so. So I think I, I milked it a bit yesterday. Uh, and now I think I'm probably, I think it's time to just put it up somewhere quiet and just move on, you know, because otherwise you just become that wanker with an award waffling on. But yeah, no, I was, it was a really lovely night. I probably wish I, I finally met the Talking Dairy Girls, by the way, if you know them, they're three ladies who have this really interesting podcast about dairy and it really inspired me as well. So they want me to come on and have a chat with their podcast soon. Um, and of course I was chatting to Nicola Talent with Crime World and Nicola Talent is like the nicest person in the world if you don't listen to crime world do it's one of ireland's most popular crime podcasts um and we just had a great now i was a little bit i was a little bit sauced by that stage so i was, I was probably talking a bit of shite but if for anyone who knows me that's what i do so yeah um look for anyone watching this i just want to say thank you um for listening anyone who's listening you guys have supported this you've inspired me you've helped me continue when i didn't want to do it and i didn't want to write and i hated what i was doing messages from you guys coming in is what absolutely reinvigorates my my passion for this project uh wherever this is going to end and judging by the mountain of books uh this isn't going to end anytime soon so um you're very welcome along this journey basically okay that's enough waxing lyrical um i sometimes when i do videos i like to point out books i'm reading so for any patrons who are here the book club is still going ahead uh, i think maybe i'll do a zoom next week and the way it's going to work is i'll do an open invite zoom so I'll go on. If nobody is there, I'm just going to record a video and put it up like a, uh, like a, what do you call them? An update. Now, and if you guys are there, we can talk a little bit about the video and talk, uh, sorry, talk about the book that we're all in theory collectively reading. This book called Dirty Linen by Martin Doyle. So it's a really lovely, um, well, sorry, lovely is a, not a good word, word to describe issues related to the troubles, but it's a very well-written book um, about, uh, it's autobiographical, you know, growing up uh, in an area where there was uh, so many violence, so much violence, so much killing. Um, then I'm going to talk to Ronan McGreevy next week about the kidnapping of Don, Don, what was it called? What's his name? It's gone out of my head, but it's about a, a famous IRA kidnapping, basically. So that, that book has got great reviews coming in, so I, I'm not going to do it. Maybe for book club next month, but this is what I'm currently reading. Um, yeah, and that's it. Any comments or anything, just please, any questions, you know, the usual. I'm, all, I'm an open book when it comes to this sort of stuff, so... Um, all I want to say is thank you. I, I'm still kind of on cloud nine, but I'm going to go walk my dog and um, yeah, see what happens. I wish I was there for the speech. I feel a bit, uh, I'll get over it, but uh, I've done enough speeches. I've done enough pontificating in my life. There's no, didn't need to do more. So that's it. Thank you for listening. Um, and yeah, I guess hopefully this opens new doors for, for us on the podcast and um, maybe I'll be able to talk to more, more, more people. 
and get their stories out there. I'm waffling. Okay, thank you, folks. See you.